Hi there, and congratulations with the new year 2021. Let's hope it brings us lots of joy, health, and relief from the challenges we have faced last year. Within War Robots, we invite you to start this year with a fun YouTube challenge. This time you can win if you're both a video creator yourself or just a viewer on YouTube. War Robots YouTube is a highly educative space, and lots of players have improved their tactics and skill in War Robots significantly by watching the videos of others. With this challenge, we want to encourage more of this. Here is what you need to do for a chance to win one of 250 Havocs and 250 Scorpions. If you are a video creator yourself, make a video, include the hashtag MyWRTip2021 into the video title and share a tip that many players will find useful in 2021. It can be uh, advice of a maneuver on your favorite robot or a weapon, a tip on using resources more wisely, or just a technical advice that you believe often brings you victory in battle. Share the tips you have discovered. And if you are just a viewer on YouTube, put the hashtag MyWRTip2021 into the search box on YouTube and have a look at a variety of different tips that others have shared Find a channel that you have just discovered for the first time, whose tip you appreciated, and share it in the comment section under this video. Here is how you do it. Your player ID, link to the My WR Tip 2021 video of a channel you have just discovered, and a brief description of the tip in that video. We will pick 250 video makers and 250 viewers who left a comment under this video and will reward each one with either a Havoc or a Scorpion. You have the whole January to participate in this challenge and winners will be announced shortly in February. Now let's share some tips and find some channels that are eager to help you improve your War Robot skill and enjoyment of the game. We wish you and your loved ones to be well in 2021. And of course, happy hunting, Commanders! Hey, it's Money, and my War Robots tip for 2021 is to activate the manual targeting lock function in the advanced tab of your War Robots account options, which in my opinion every newcomer to the game should really start doing right away. It gives you this extra button down there at the bottom and effectively allow you a lot more control over the battlefield and what targets you want to be spending your precious time locking onto, right? And although it doesn't prevent all targeting hiccups from happening, it, once you got used to it, helps you prevent a lot of them. You see, for example, this phantom right there comes out of his cloaking unit, and I know that, and I want to establish a target lock-on immediately when it happens. And using this button, I was able to do this no problem, and uh, not waste any unnecessary time hoping for the right target switch. So try to get used to it, because it's gonna be worth it. Hello everyone, this is Kitty War Robot aka Professor of War Robot, and I'll keep it brief since I know that most of you would rather smash some robots. I prepared two tips on the battlefield and let's get right into it. Number one, corner shoot. Okay, this is a classic one and what a great way to exchange damage with an enemy except that enemy is shooting at an infrastructure. Remember that some robots can pull this one much easier like in the footage I like to do it with Bulgasari. On to the next, this one is for all the people that run shielded robots. Share the umbrella. Sharing is caring. Make sure you protect your teammates and let them utilize your shield. Be a team player and bring out that synergy. After all, unless you strictly play free for all, Roll Robots is a team game. That's all for me, people and always be safe and happy new year. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top tip in terms of how to win in Beacon Rush and Domination mode. This is something that top players always do in order to boost up their silver, their gold, um, you know, things like event coins and other resources, and I'm gonna share that with you today. So the first thing you wanna do when you drop into a map, it doesn't matter whether it's Dead City, uh, you know, Shenzhen, Power Plant, uh, whichever map it is, always make sure that you go for your two closest home beacons in this case, it's going to be this beacon over here and that beacon over there. But it's not just going for those beacons. Uh, you have to know how to defend it. And another thing too, if you see like three players racing to this beacon, don't go to that beacon. Go to this beacon over here instead. Okay, so always be 
aware of you know what your teammates are doing I'm gonna show you how these top players defend the beacon as well because there is a bit of a tactic to it and you know once you learn to master it it's something that's gonna help boost your win percentage up okay so how do you defend a beacon if the enemy was to attack this beacon and I'm outside of the circle here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run into the circle and defend within the circle this is gonna allow my teammates if it's beacon rush to drop in and help me out uh, if I stay outside of the circle and the enemy were to get this beacon um, my teammates won't be able to drop in and help me out so that's uh, the other tip I'm going to mention here, but what I'm going to also do now is I'm going to show you an example of how I do it so that you guys can see visually how to defend a beacon. Okay, so you're going to watch me defend this beacon. So notice how there's a player over there and there's a player over here. So I'm going to stay on this beacon in order to defend it. So let's hit this guy here. Okay, so you notice how my teammate is going to be dropping in, but I'm not going to be leaving this beacon. There is a player here who's trying to take me out. So you notice how I'm staying on this beacon. He went into phase shift. Let's kind of get him. And even though this guy is uh, knocking me down, I'm going to stay on this beacon in order to defend it. This is going to allow my teammates to drop in. A couple of them have dropped in, but they need to move on to this beacon and I see this happening actually very often you know players not doing that so let's take this guy out you see what I'm doing I'm fighting inside that circle in order to defend it and once he takes me out I will drop in quickly and move inside of that circle so that they don't get it so that's what you want to do in order to win games I'm hoping, you know, this tip is going to be able to help you guys out. If it does, let me know. And, um, you know, good luck with your battles. Hey, what's up, everybody? Chief here. So as we're bringing 2020 to a close, I'm really looking forward to 2021. Now, looking back at 2020, we had a lot of big changes in War Robots, and most of those ended up being pretty positive changes. So I'm really looking forward to some continued changes throughout 2021. And I'm gonna be telling you the two biggest tips that I have for you as you go into the new year. So tip number one, have fun. It is a must. This is a game. We play it to have fun. We've got a wonderful community and we all stick together. And that really helps bring War Robots up to the next level uh, it is you the community that is what the game is all about so have fun that's tip number one now tip number two is more for an actual tip within the game and that is try to play with a balanced hanger okay a balanced hanger what do i mean by that i mean have a healing robot in there have a tanky robot in there uh, have a fast robot in there if you play beacon uh, modes you know it's kind of important um and have a little bit of diversity with your weapons as well now why is that a tip well because everything is based on the honor system so with the honor point system we need to be trying to gear our hangers to give us the best chance at earning those honor points so that we can rank higher at the end of the match um and it's also going to help protect you uh in the long run because with every game, there's going to be rebalances, and I expect 2021 is going to be bringing even more rebalances to War Robots. And that's fine. Uh, where it really hurts is when you don't have any diversity in your hangar. So that's why I say play with a balanced hangar with not only robots, but also with your weapons. So that if there is a little nerf that comes, or a big nerf that comes, <laughs> it's not going to affect you nearly as bad. Uh, and you'll be able to just kind of take it in stride and move on and uh, put in the next best thing. Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> that's all I have for you guys here. I just wanted to uh, wish you all a, uh, a happy new year and uh, I look forward to seeing you all throughout the next year. Take care. My War Robots tip for 2021 is to acknowledge and recognize the incredible people that are within this community that Pixonic brought through this amazing game. Over the course of time, I've gotten to know more and more people, whether it was through the live stream chat, Discord, working together with other YouTubers, 
working with the representatives at Pixonic, I have both experienced and observed professional, courteous conduct that when I see that and experience that, it makes me want to be a better person. In the community, whether it's this one or all the communities throughout the world, there will always be hate. However, there is more than enough love to outshine and surpass any of that. And for 2021, we could contribute as we see others do when they add their expressions in the chat, when they give their time as moderators, when they work with you, when you make a mistake, when they give you advice, even when people are mad, but then there's understanding, we can help by improving ourselves and contribute even more so that in 2021, this small gaming community becomes even greater. We go to a game for an outlet, especially in a time when we're in a crisis. Our families, ourselves, our jobs may be in disarray and we need to change. And as things improve and we start to get back to our lives, then we actually can transform and be a better version of ourselves so that when we join together in any community, even this one here, which is just a game, it becomes more than just a game. It becomes a place that you go to, you look forward to an extended family and a great experience. Bring justice to yourself, to your family, and to your lives. Justice out. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny Lightning back with another War Robots video and these are my War Robots tips for 2021. I'm going to give you some tips on which modules to look for, especially if you're newer to the game, free to play or cheap to play. First off, do not overlook the armor kits. The armor kits are actually amazing and these are movable. This is durability you're buying that can be put onto any robot and these are relatively cheap to upgrade compared to a lot of the other modules and whatnot. So basically, once you get a robot to around level 8, level 9, it starts getting really expensive to upgrade the robots any further. And that's when you might want to think about upgrading your regular armor kits. Alright, three of these on one robot will give you 15% more durability, and they can be taken off and moved to any other robot in the game. So these are huge, guys. These are huge. Do not overlook the regular armor kits. Heavy armor kits, even at level 1, Three of these do 21% more hit points for your robot. So if you can dish out the gold and you don't have the silver to upgrade them, that's fine. Three of these do some huge, huge hit point boosts. Totally worth getting these if you can do it, guys. Totally worth getting these if you can do it. Overdrive units are amazing. Three of these will give you 30% more damage at level one. You do gotta lose a little health before they kick in, but overdrives are definitely something to look at if you can get your hands on these things. Now, last stands are amazing. These are kind of a must have, especially when you get in the Champion League. The only problem is these really don't start doing that well until you upgrade them to higher levels. That two seconds, they the two seconds at level one, that's not very good. But if you can get one of these maxed out on each one of your robots in the higher leagues, Huge help. Unfortunately, it's very expensive, but these modules are amazing. Adelborn and Anti-Control, great for your beacon runners, guys. Both of these are awesome for beacon runners. Fortifiers, anything with a physical shield or an energy shield, these things are awesome. You, you definitely want to look into getting a few of these if you run shield robots. Unless it has a purple shield or reflector shield, it doesn't work for those. And finally, we have nuclear reactors and thermonuclear reactors. These are nice if you need a robot where you're just like, I need some extra damage on this, but I want damage that's constant. I would much rather have the uh, overdrives myself, but if you don't want something that you got to lose some health for it to kick in, these are pretty nice. But do not overlook the free armor kits, guys. They're relatively exp inexpensive to upgrade. You can put them on any robot. It's permanent movable damage that you're buying. They, they're very, very nice if you're free to play or cheap to play or kind of new to the game. All right. Hope this little guide helps. See you guys later. My War Robots tip for 2021 is about how to create what I claim to be the best and fastest middle beacon capper setup you can build for your hangar. Alright, so what do we do with these ingredients? If you don't have a raven, you start by building it in the workshop. 
Producing a full Raven in workshop costs 25 million silver and 31 million to upgrade it to level 9, the level where a robot will reach its maximum base speed. So in total we do need approximately 56 million silver to build a Raven from scratch and upgrade it to a usable level. Then we pick a weapon combo to use with it. For maximum performance aim for Havoc scatter setup. For budget you can try out Storm Gust. Next we equip active module jump unit to it. If we have the option to put Lost Stand and Anti Control to it we do that as well because both of these two will increase our survivability and maneuverability in battlefield. Alright, let's now assume that we built our Raven. How is it the best middle beacon capper with this setup? To make it so we are going to utilize both the built-in jumping thrusters of Raven combined with the jump unit. And we are going to use them at the same time. Why? Because if we use them one by one the distance you'll travel will be shorter than what we really need. Also your jump speed will be slower. So what are the exact steps we need to take to get to center beacon as fast as possible after we spawn in battlefield in a beacon game mode? First, get a clear sight with the center beacon or make sure there are no obstacles that will block your super jump. Second, calculate the distance that your super jump will take you to. This is something you can get used to with time but for the sake of this video I will show you how far away a double jump and triple jump can take you at the end of this video. After we are ready to initiate takeoff we have two options in front of us. We either press jump unit and normal jump buttons at the same time or we press the jump unit first and then the raven's jump ability. Both of these options should be able to take us to our desirable destination. In most of the mid to long range maps this robot can reach the middle or side beacons faster than any other robot can. Don't believe me? Let's make a small comparison with other top beacon runners. The thing with the raven and this double or triple jump is that it can be used for surprise attacks as well. You can cross over hundreds of meters with your super jump and get to an annoying enemy sniper or an important target or even red team's home beacon that you caught unguarded. Not only that but let's say an enemy is getting close to you in an open area where you have no cover. Are you all done then? If you have one jump ready with your jump unit, no. You do the same super jump to escape any problematic situation. This is all possible and makes this setup very fun to run. Well, what about downsides? Raven does not have a super powerful defense system, thus it can die relatively easy if not played carefully. Also by utilizing jump unit we do use a lot of power cells, so beware of that and beware of your resources. My tip to overcome this slightly is to use the quartermaster pilot skill which will make every active module activation cheaper. But at the end of the day I believe Raven with its ultra jump can be both fun and effective in any league you want to use it. Thanks for watching my war robots tip for 2021. I hope it was useful and informative.
Hey, what's up everyone? This is AD Gaming and here are my WR tips for the new year 2021. As you all know, War Robots is a team gameplay style. Usually the modes that most of the people play in are Beacon Rush, TDM or Domination. And I will tell you a few tips that every player in my opinion should know and to become also much better player in this game. To be a team player basically so let's start the first thing that you should know the most important thing in this game is to take beacons is it sometimes really really annoying that somebody is forgetting to take beacons when while you are really really trying to win the game so you always need to be aware to your surroundings and to keep an eye on the beacon bar always to try to have the beacon control on your side always you need to remember this thing this is the most important thing in this game either you are playing beacon rush or domination or t on tdm you don't have beacons but the thing is you have to always to keep an eye to your, uh, on your teammates to keep them safe to stick to them to try to help them out to get the most skills in tdm and by doing that you will most likely win matches on TDM. If you're gonna stick to your teammates, you most likely are gonna win. Not necessarily need to have all the bells and whistles to succeed. And yeah, when I, if I see somebody that has the best robots in the game, I will try to keep an eye on him and I will try to keep them safe, keep them alive. Even though I'm using when I have some kind of not an effective build, I will try to keep an eye on my teammate and I will try to stick to him and with this thing we will tr we will eventually we will succeed and we will win matches by doing that next thing you should know very important tip you always need to make sure to choose wisely your robots and the weapons that's suitable for the particular game mode it means that if you are playing beacon rush you usually need brawling type of weapons like shotguns and let's say shredders and the sonic weapons and this is just an examples and let's say if you are playing tdm if you are playing tdm usually tdm is uh you can say people saying camping mode but usually you need to play like with robots that uh, has special ability like scorpions that teleporting to the enemies and doing this sneak attack and going back to safety and also you can choose sniper uh, weapons and sniper robots like Yegir with sniper and weapons and, but of course you always need to make sure that you are not exposing yourself to the danger and if you do so you always need to to compensate the loss by using some other stuff you always need to make sure you have more brawling weapons and brawling robots on your hand gear it doesn't matter if you are a high level champion league or silver league to make sure that in this game this is a fast paced gameplay and you always need to make sure you have brawling weapons fast speed robots fast paced gameplay this game and one tank maybe it's enough and a titan that's suitable for your playstyle. If you are a supporter, you, you would like to use some kind of support titan and also support robot. But if you are a brawler, pure brawler, you would like to use something like the Arthur. It's just an example. But uh, most, the most important thing in this game, and this is not about gameplay, is the most important thing is to have fun playing the game we are spending time playing this game and this is the most important thing to have fun in this game and yeah this is what i have this is my tips for the new year 2021 wish you all good luck take care have a good day slash night hey gente soy pinceladas un mega saludo espero que la estés pasando muy bien hoy les voy a dar un consejo a todos los que están en ligas bajas 
y tienen planeado en este 2021 subir de liga, así que atentos. Muchos me preguntan actualmente qué robot les puedo recomendar y cómo equiparlo. Hoy te voy a dar el siguiente consejo acerca de uno en específico que te va a servir como inversión a futuro. Ojo con esto, habilidades del piloto, microchips y módulos. Primero, mezcla las habilidades del piloto con las ventajas que te dan los microchips. ¿Para qué? Para obtener el mejor desempeño posible al menor costo. Algo súper importante en la economía del juego. Como recomendación, te voy a hablar del Fenrir, que es una excelente opción que te va a ayudar a subir de liga. Ojo, cuando le vayas a asignar un piloto, considera solo invertir AU en cuatro habilidades importantes. Más durabilidad, aumento de capacidad del escudo de energía, más velocidad y consumo menos de pilas de energía. Es importante que actives la habilidad de consumo menos de pilas de energía, ya que vas a utilizar demasiado el módulo activo de reparación avanzada. Ojo con eso. Por ningún motivo, escucha bien, por ningún motivo nunca vayas a activar una habilidad de piloto relacionada a las armas. ¿Por qué? Porque vas a estar subiendo de liga y vas a cambiar constantemente de ellas. Así que ojo con eso. En tu dron, concentra todo el AU en microchips de zócalo tipo C. Que te van a dar más puntos de defensa al usar el módulo activo. Y así vas a conseguir los mejores resultados con el Fenrir en las batallas. En función de las armas, sin duda alguna te recomiendo las lanzallamas y las que tienen de que son de energía ilimitada. En este momento son la mejor opción. Pero todo depende de tu estilo y modo de juego que vayas dominando. En función de los módulos pasivos, todo depende de tu piloto. Pero te recomiendo sin duda alguna el Fortifier. Muy buena opción si activas el piloto Nicolás. Me despido gente. Espero que la pases muy bien y que tengas muy buena casa en el campo de batalla. Bye bye.